those difficult times, those times in our lives today and every day that is fit only for an animal. Hard times, difficult times, times of uncertainty, times when life literally stinks. Yet there in the midst of all of it, we might find him. We might find him there in the part of our life that stinks the most. That part of our life that is fit only for an animal. Yet there in the midst of it, he can come to us. He can reach in and bring us out of it. Because he came to us so we can come to him. If there's a part of our lives right now, if there's a part of our lives that we're dealing with, that's difficult, a place we wouldn't expect to find Jesus Christ, all we need to do is look for him and we will find him there. In unexpected, out-of-the-way places of our lives that we may never have dreamed of. In hardship, in difficulty, in sickness, in frustration, in failure. Even in our fears. He can meet us there. He can meet you, he can meet I, he can meet any in those places. Conditions less than ideal, less than sterile. He can meet you there. He can birth himself into it, so to speak. That is just you know, be found there in little ways, in small ways. In times of great stress and hardship. He meets us there because that is where he met humanity. <coughs> that is where he met all humanity 2,000 years ago. Not a place fit for a king. Not in a glorious palace. But in a place fit only for animals. A barn. Smelled of straw, dung, waste. He's still there to meet us today. In Hebrews 5, it spoke of the need of the high priest that resided and presided over the people of Israel as being one from who was from among the people. And that was so that that priest could understand could understand what the people went through. He had to be one of them. So that when they had hard times, when they had failures and weaknesses, that priest was subject to those same things. So that he could intercede. He could plead their case, so to speak. He could represent them. Because he knows and he understood what they were going through. You see, Jesus Christ, all the more, has been where you are. He's been in that place fit only for animals. He understands what you go through. He understands your difficulties. He understands your weaknesses. All of ours. He understands mine. He understands yours. He understands what this world is all about. He knows what we go through. He went through it himself. In Hebrews 5, it says, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petition with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. You see, Jesus Christ, he went through experiences that caused him to cry out, that caused him to shed tears. He understands. He understands. Because he's been there. The prophet Isaiah, 500 years or so before the birth of Jesus. And Isaiah is called at times the fifth gospel because so much of the work of Jesus Christ is found in Isaiah. So much of who Jesus is and so much of what God would send him to do and so much of what he has done for all of us. Isaiah writes about, but speaking about Jesus. In Isaiah 53 verse 3 it says, He is despised. And rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. You see, Jesus Christ understands rejection. He understands rejection. He understands sorrow. He is acquainted with grief. 
all those places, those hard times that you and I may pass through, He understands them and we can meet Him there. He will meet you there. He will meet each and every one of us there. That when you are going through difficult days, hardships, uncertainties, when you just don't know what to do next, when you find yourself crying out, Lord, life stinks. He's there. When you find yourself in conditions and circumstances that are less than ideal, He's there. When things get difficult, He's there. We can find Him there. Because He's been there. And He has come for each and every one of us. To stand with us during those difficult and hard times. When we enter the problems of life. When we enter into those places in our life. That are fit only for animals. We can know that he has shared them with us. And still continues to share them with us. And there in the midst of them he is there to meet each and every one of us. Our fears, our worries, our brokenness, our sinfulness. <coughs> Our limitations. He is there for all of us. In Hebrews 4. Again speaking of Christ. Speaking of Jesus. Hebrews 4. In verse 14. It says therefore. Because he has been here. Because he has seen firsthand And experienced firsthand Our human existence. And continues to experience our human existence. It says, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith that we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. You see, he can sympathize with your weaknesses, my weaknesses, all of our weaknesses. He understands them. But instead, we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. He's been tempted in every way. Whenever you, whenever you have a temptation, whatever it might be, whenever I have one, whenever any of us have one, he understands. He knows what it's like to wrestle with humanity and our human problems. He understands our concerns. He understands the pools of the flesh. He understands it all. And because he does, we know he can intercede for us. He's been in those places that is fit only for animals. The desires, the inordinate things that may rise in our hearts, he understands them. He has been tempted in every way, yet was without sin. Yet without sin. Therefore, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in times of need. He understands what you and I go through. He understands when we fail. He understands the stray thoughts that may arise in our hearts. He understands the words that sometimes we may wish to speak that may not be appropriate. He understands all these things. He's been there. He's done that. He's entered that place fit only for animals. And that place fit only for animals is that condition that humanity is always in apart from Jesus Christ or apart from participating with who He is. He understands our temptations that would lead us into those dung-strewed places of the stable of our lives. Yet He has done everything needed for each and every one of us. And He remains sinless and untainted, yet fully acquainted with our brokenness. Tempted by sin, but never gave in to it. He meets us in the dark places of our being and of our lives. And he calls to each and every one of us with assurances of love that he will not abandon us in those places fit only for animals. That he has come to us so that we might come to him. 
You see, that's why Jesus was born in a barn, in a stable, a place fit only for animals. And he still meets us in just such places, even today. I'll have a brief prayer, and then I'll ask Ken, Pastor Ken, to come forward and lead us in our communion. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our Lord and our Savior who is... He has walked in the roads that we have walked. He has been in our place. He understands when we are in that place fit only for an animal, for he himself was born in that very place. Father, we thank you for Christ. We thank you for our Lord and our Savior who has given us that gift of eternal life and so, so much more. Father, and as we go and as we observe and celebrate this Christmas season, we pray that our minds will ever be turned towards him and the hearts of each and every one of us would be fixed and focused upon him. Father, we praise you and we thank you for Jesus. And we thank Jesus Christ for coming to that place, for meeting us in that place fit only for animals. And we praise him and we thank him in his holy name. Amen.